Hi everyone and welcome to Enso On. My name is Lisa and today we're talking floaty summer blouses. Okay, so I wanted to let you know that after recording my last two videos in my new space, I noticed that there was an awful lot of ambient noise. And even though I don't notice it when I'm sewing, I noticed in the video that you could hear the train, which is a couple blocks away. You could hear the wind, you could hear the dog from across the way. And so I got this lav mic. So let me know if this lav makes a difference, if the sound is better. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank those of you who have donated on my coffee account. And I'll put that below. And I would like to put the names of the people who have sent me a little something to get a coffee or in this case to get a lav mic. It's also allowed me to get a better lens for my camera and I'm starting to learn a new editing software to hopefully level up my videos. So those little donations really do help and I wanted to thank those people for doing that. Okay, so floaty summer blouses. I have been noticing this trend over the last, probably over the last year, but it's really come up for me just recently, of these beautiful flowy summer blouses. I'll show you some pictures from my Pinterest account, and there are a couple of different companies who have these beautiful flowy blouses, usually gathered with a front or a back yoke, and I was totally inspired to make one of these because although they're light and airy, they also give you a little bit of sun coverage, which of course, and I know, you know, sheer fabrics don't give you very much sun coverage, but at least there's something about it that feels a little more covered up and a little cooler. So when I was looking for a pattern to approximate specifically this one blouse is the one I was looking at, um, I was recommended to the Meadowood blouse by Straight Stitch Designs. And I went over and I think I've told you guys about this pattern before. I bought it and I loved it. So Straight Stitch Designs is out of BC. She has actually done some free patterns for other websites and uh, now she has her own, or I think for a while now she's had her own company as well. So you can access both her designs but also see some of the free patterns that she's done for other companies over on her website. So the original version of this pattern I actually haven't made yet. I've only done two hacks. So let me show you the original in the photos. It's got a v-neck and then it's basically got a built-in button placket that you then overlap, put in your buttonholes and your buttons and you have this beautiful flowy um, blouse that gives exactly what I was looking for, which is those gathers uh, at the front and the back yokes and also a grown on sleeve. So when I saw that pattern and I saw the original, I did like it, but I wanted to see what I could do with it. So first of all, I decided to do a muslin and I made the muslin out of some leftover fabric that I had from Minerva and you might recognize this. Okay, so this blouse is using a cotton gauze from Minerva that I used to line Lily's jean jacket. And because I had already cut into this, I had just enough to finish it. And the only way I had just enough to finish it is I did piece together the back yoke, as you can see there. And I also didn't put any buttons on the front. I literally just cut the front on the fold as well and made it just straight across. This was just for me to see, you know, the fit on it, see if I would like the style. I really love it in this cotton gauze. It's, I thought it would be more sheer, but it actually does not feel very sheer at all. I can wear it with just a regular bra underneath, partially because of the pattern, I'm guessing. Um, if you look up close, you've got the gathers here and they're top stitched. And then again at the back, and it's got you know a good length on it not too long but you can definitely still tuck it in so here are some photos of me wearing it and again i have already got so much use out of this much more than i expected i kind of thought it would just be a twall and that was about it but i've really loved wearing it and i found it very light and very cool so then for the second version, I wanted to make it in white, sort of like the original. And again, I had some fabric from Minerva. Now I had made Lily a first day of school dress from this fabric that actually never made it to the website because it didn't turn out fantastically well. But I did manage to make this second version. Oops. I did manage to make this second version with again, a few little bits of adjustments. So here's number two. And for number two, I wanted to do a version that looked like that Pinterest picture that I showed you. So 
I needed to create a round neck and I needed to create a popover placket. So in order to do that, I actually got out my Cali dress at pattern and I used the top of the Cali shirt dress as well as the popover placket from the Cali. And I literally just put them down on top of the original pattern and filled in that space and cut it like that. And it worked really, really well. I think that, you know, you, you can't really tell that it's not how the original would be. I did line the lower half of the front of this blouse with some cotton gauze because I was worried that it would be too see-through. I might end up cutting it out only because it makes the dress, dress, it makes the blouse warmer with an extra layer and I find I'm wearing it with like a tank top underneath or or a tank style bra and so I, the the sheerness doesn't bother me. Um, now I did play with the direction of the fabric and maybe I'll put pictures, it'll probably be easier to see. So I did horizontal across the top and then vertical going down. Um, again, I did uh, the popover placket. I also used some linen bias tape that I already had to finish off the neckline. And let's see what else. I did have to do a piece together back yoke. And because I was doing this sort of from leftover fabric, you know, the, the pattern matching, or in this case, the texture matching is not there. I've decided just to live with that. <laughs> I've decided to live with that as something that only sewists would notice and not worry about it. Um, let's see what else. I also decided to add little sleeve armbands, or they're not really cuffs, but armbands, I guess, sleeve bands, uh, to kind of mimic the original. It also, I thought, one thing I don't really love about this first one is the edges of the sleeves just don't have any any weight any sub substance so i thought by giving them a little bit of an armband at the end there you'd have a little bit more substance um, and again you've got the gathers so i wore it out immediately after i made it in fact i wore it out before i put the buttons on <laughs> I, sa I said to myself it was a tester to make sure that everything was good before I put on the buttons. But really, what do you do when you finish something? You just want to put it on and wear it out. And I was going to the beach, and so I wore it as a little cover-up with a hat, and it felt amazing. So I'm really happy with this. I love the crisp nature of it. I love the floaty nature of it. And I think it absolutely hits the mark for what I was trying to achieve. So I do have a link below for the pattern. It's an affiliate link. When I went there to buy the pattern, which I did buy the pattern, I saw that they had an affiliate program. So I did join that. So if you would like to try this, I would be grateful if you would click through my link and I get just a little something back to thank me for um, leading you to them. It doesn't cost you anything extra, of course. And yeah, that's all. I'd love to know if you are on the floaty blouse track and if you have made any for yourself. If so, which pattern did you use? What fabric did you use? And were you happy with the results? You can also link me up if it's on Instagram so that I can go over and see it. Okay guys, that's all for me today. I have lots more content coming up soon. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't followed yet, hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notifications. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.